All right, guys. So before we proceed any further, I want to do a quick review of the architecture of our current application. And then I want to show you guys what I ultimately want it to look like once it's done. So here I've got a little diagram and um, we've got our in the blue. So this big blue box, this represents our host machine. So in this case, this is my Windows machine. And so here we've got our express application that's listening on port 3000. And then we've got our Mongo database, which our express application can talk to on port 27017. And if we need to actually send a request to our express application, then we just send a, a request to port 3000 to our local machine. It'll then get mapped to port 3000 of our express application. And so that's the current architecture. And, uh, you know, one of the things I wanted to point out, especially when we started to add the Mongo database into our application, is that we never opened up a port for our Mongo database, right? So just like we opened up port 3000 for our Express server so that the outside world can talk to it, we never did that for our Mongo database. And I actually did that on purpose because, you know, we definitely could open up a port so that we can talk directly to the Mongo database. So we could open up, you know, port 27017 on our local machine or really any port really, and then map it to port 27017 uh, to our Mongo container. And that would be perfectly fine uh, if you needed to talk to our Mongo database. However, uh, I want you to think about what that would ultimately mean. Because now we're letting the outside world talk to our Mongo database, right? The only thing that actually needs to talk to our Mongo database is our Express application. So there isn't really a need to open up that port. And it's also a little bit of a security vulnerability because your database holds all of your critical application data. It's got all of your user information. It's got all of their emails. It could have potentially other sensitive information like social security number, passwords, and other things like that. So generally, it's best not to make the Mongo container accessible to the outside world. And uh, I love how Docker by default, uh, you know, if we don't open up any ports, it already isolates the Mongo container. So the outside world can't talk to it. So you can see that just by running with Docker, we've already added a little bit of security to our application because only our Express application and our containers within that container, uh, within that network that Docker Compose makes can talk to that Mongo database. No one else can. So once again, just to reiterate, we aren't going to open up any ports to our Mongo database. Uh, you know, just like in our Docker Compose file right here, uh, you can see we opened up the ports for our node app, but there's no ports opened up for Mongo. So we're not going to open up any ports. We're going to make it so that only our uh, application, our Express app, our Express container can talk to our Mongo database. And so, like I said, you know, we're not going to publish a specific port for our Mongo database uh, just for security purposes. And there's really no reason to. So we're going to actually remove that. Uh, and so now what I want to talk about is scaling up our node containers. So, you know, we talked about passing in that scale flag so that we can increase uh, the number of node containers that we have so that we can handle an increased load in traffic. So what we did was we would spin up another node express container, which would then co connect to our Mongo database using the same exact port. And to be able to talk to this container, what we would have to do is publish a different port. So the first node container, uh, you could see that uh, if we send a request to port 3000, it would get to map to port 3000 of the first container. And then we'd have to grab a different port on our local machine, like 3001. And so any traffic that gets sent to our local host on port 3001 would get mapped to port 3000 on our second node container. And if we wanted a third one, we'd have to open up another port like 3002 and so on. So if we had 50 containers, 50 node apps, uh, we would need to open up 50 different ports. And, you know, like I said, that's not a scalable solution. Uh, you know, our front end shouldn't have to be aware of the number of node containers that we're running on our back end. So what we're going to ultimately do is we're going to add a load balancer. So there's a couple of different options that we have. Uh, you have things like HA proxy, you've got traffic, and then you've got Nginx. So I'm going to walk you through how we can do this with Nginx. And you'll see it's really simple. And it's a good skill set to have because you'll use Nginx in other scenarios outside of Docker as well. It's a great web server as well. So ultimately what our final architecture is gonna look like <coughs> is we're going to have a Nginx container. And this Nginx container is going to be the entrance into our application. So we're no longer going to publish any ports on our two node instances. So we're no longer going to open up port 3000, port 3001 on our local machine. Instead, we're going to publish one port for our Nginx container. And that port can be anything. So we can continue to use 3000 like we have, or we can pick any other port. Uh, and you'll see that, you know, when we get to production, we're just going to use port 80 because that's the default port for HTTP. 
as well as port uh, 443, which is the port for HTTPS. So we'll open up, uh, you know, the port of our choice on our local machine, and we're going to map it to port 80. The reason we map it to port 80 is because that's the default port that Nginx listens on. Technically, that's fully customizable, so we can tell Nginx to listen on a different port, but there's no need for the extra uh, configuration. I'd rather just leave it to the default port. So, you know, 3000, port 3000, is going to get mapped to port 80. And then what our Nginx is going to do is it's going to act as a load balancer. So every request that it receives, it's going to load balance it to our two express uh, instances. And if we have four, five, one, or a thousand instances, Nginx will be able to load balance all of those requests across all of our node instances. And so this is a much cleaner, elegant solution because first of all, we only have to publish one port and then Nginx, which is you know highly efficient, is going to be able to ensure that all of our node instances are adequately um, balanced with regards to the number of requests that they receive. All right, and so that's all I wanted to cover in this section. So uh, in the next video, we'll get started on adding that Nginx container.